So I'm in Carver, uh, very close. We're in Lorient uh, at the moment, near all the Emico 60 boats. And I'm with Cedric, kindly taking a little bit of time. Thanks for taking some time, Cedric, uh, of your day to show us some of the Carver equipment. Now, I have to say, I'm a big fan of, of Carver's robust uh, equipment. And I thought it might be interesting for you folks to see some of the innovation and, and some of the things we can go through. So let's start with the jammer range. And let's, if just immediately looking straight away, you can see, Cedric, it's totally different from anybody else's shape and, and style of jammer. Can you just show us? So you have a, it looks like you have a range of two here, right? You have, this is the... Uh, yes, it's true, um, James. Uh, we, uh, we have a complete range on jammer from one ton up to 10 tons. Okay. Uh, this is the, the one ton working load, one and a half, two and a half, and five tons. Um, we have two ranges. One is uh, made of aluminum and the other one made of carbon, as you can see here. Okay. Um, Are they, they the, the same tonnage, but just a different style, let's say, the different material, but they still can maintain the same tonnage? Exactly. Okay. Yes. So it's, um, it's for fashion purposes, they have the different, the different look. Yeah, no, yes, and also for class 40s, they are not allowed, for example, to use carbon, so it's also okay. good to have the aluminum ones. And we started to develop the aluminum range, and then the carbon one uh, three years ago. Interesting. Um, what is very interesting with our jammer is that uh, it, the rope never gives up thanks to our uh, three jaws inside, which are really uh, beating the, the rope and uh, never damage the rope. I see. So it, it can't, you can kind of see by the shape of it. So you basically have the grabs, let's say. There's three of them and they're, they're squeezed down a funnel. And, uh, and it looks like that that's how they work. That, there's the activation. So it looks like if you look at the shape of it, they're squeezed. And as the rope pulls more, they're squeezed. It, exactly. And so what you're saying is that, that the, the, the rope itself is never harmed in the compression of, of, the, of the closing maneuver. Is that basically the... Yeah, exactly. We, we, never, you, um, we never have problem of uh, cover burning uh, okay. thanks to our our three jaws, uh, otherwise on some of the competitor jammers, they only have two and... Uh, so you have three. So, so we've got three, so it's impossible to let the rope uh, slide. Super, that's, mm. that's amazing, thanks. And this is obviously the big, the big beast. Uh, so what's the load on this one? This one is a five ton working load. Okay. Uh, wow. It's a very big one that you can find on, on big boats. Yeah. Um, how it works, um, you just pull to operate, to lock the, the system, uh, pull, pull this button to lock the system, yeah. and then pull here to release and okay. let the rope Super. glide. Super. And, and one of the things that would, would be of interest to me is how do you maintain and clean this, this system? Is the, I can see yes. some keys. I, I will, I will show you uh, what is nice, that you can release easily our, our jammers just by, by uh, with this screw, okay. and then you can remove uh, the the jammer here. Yeah, the entire so system. Here it's screw, but uh, I can show you in uh, in another one. Oh like, wow! Like that, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's incredible. Mm. Oh wow! That's and so now you can take that inside and work. And on then it. we just need to release those uh, two screws here. Grab screws, and you okay. can open the jammer. We let you know. So what that means is essentially you could uh, take it out, go and fix it in the warmth. Um, you know, or undercover, you can do the, the technical work inside or when it's very hot outside, you can take that off, fix it, and then when you're done, you can put it back in and exactly. you're good to go. Yeah. That's excellent. What a genius. That's some and, serious innovation. And if you have any, any injuries, uh, once you are, I don't know, cruising on, uh, crossing the Atlantic, you can just have a spare part and uh, remove this one and use another one. Without like, doing any seeker flex or anything on the deck. It's been developed yet for racing boats. My God. And it's really, really clever yeah. system. Because anybody, anybody that knows replacing a jammer means usually that you'll have to take the old jammer and the housing off the deck. Um, and that means that you have to get in behind the jammer and remove the screws or whatever. But this is, this is genius, actually. So you, you just take the mechanism that's broken and that you need to repair out. You don't have to take the entire housing with it. So for the bigger boats, this is obviously your, your furling system. And it's, this is a continuous line furling system, I presume. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of the sailors prefer the continuous sure. line. Uh, it's much more easier to use it, especially on Code Zero, Genacus, free-faring sails. Uh, we, we also have the single line, 
which is uh, much more developed for structural furlers. Structural furlers, okay. Structural furlers are honestly not used on all yachts. I mean, uh, it has been developed for racing yachts, and now we can see it on new catamarans like the, the Marsodo or RC. Okay. Uh, but basically, we are much more selling those ones. Okay, interesting. And what's what's pretty obvious, I've got it's it's not overly complex, you know, just straight away I can go to I see a little arrow here which says it's pointing downwards. So I just push down, I guess, and then here's your pin and it comes out. Yeah, and what's interesting is very that easy stays to, there to as well. Operate, and uh, it's a captive pin, exactly. Yeah, it stays so there. So you don't lose that. That would be a nightmare to lose that at sea. So that's even that's thought out. So that's that's just genius. So your torsion cable uh, effectively has all your sail and everything ready to roll. You can you can leave that on the deck and just do your sail change and you don't change the heavy, you know, the heavier part or the most awkward part which is this. This stays there. So for a quick sail change, that seems super attractive to me. I like that. That's really nice. And 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 so at the top, this is this can you, can this connect to something like a hook? I presume there's some sort of hook yeah. Setup. We've got lots of options on our furlers. Uh, this is the standard swivel, but you can also buy the two to one block uh, or the and replace it by a hook, uh, okay. an external swivel lock, uh, which is very useful for stay sail, for example. Yeah. Super. Can we have a look at some of those? Yeah, I will show you. This is obviously what remains at the top and then connects to the hook. Is that correct? What's the actual, what's the name for this? This is the This is uh, an external furling lock, uh, KFH. Uh, okay, KFH, so the external furling lock. Okay, fine. So you have your torsion, this is your torsion cable, right? Exactly. And your sail is obviously on it and it's really useful having this display in the showroom. Uh, so this connects in with your quick release. So at the base of you, you would we in practice we would be doing this on the trampoline or at the base of the mast. So we connect this in. There we go, like that. And then what would we, we just then hoist the halyard? Ho hoist it's the halyard. And operating this, only with one line. One, yeah, exactly, and one light line as well, because it's the halyards don't have to be, have to be as, quite as big either. So you, you don't have as much weight up high. But this is this is really cool. So this is the locking mechanism. And so you, you create a fixed point on the top of the mast. So once it's locked, now it's locked, you don't need it, the halyard anymore. So, you can, so that you can release the compression on the mast and also use a small diameter halyard. Super good. And then I presume for me to unlock it, do I go again? Yeah, press, press it uh, very strong and then it's oh, automatically that, released. Yeah. That, that's, that's unreal. That's unreal. I'd, I'd, I'd love to know how you do that, but that seems super simple. But yeah, wow. That's, um, that seems like an obviously a very attractive piece of equipment. And then you can get the tension from the, from the tack. So Just you can use the tack line to tack the tack line, line to, tension yeah. and then get, yeah, and get the perfect sail, sail, tri you know, sail shape and everything. God, exactly. that's, that's well done. <laughs> super, super interesting. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at this. So this, what, these, these are your cars as well. Yeah, this is a system that we have developed for uh, square top button, especially on catamarans. Okay. Uh, it helps uh, to drop the sail because, uh, as you know, you always have to release uh, the, the last piece. Yeah, exactly. So, so thanks to this system, uh, which is called Gaff Lock. Okay. Uh, we, we've got the, the halyard, which is going through this loop. Yes. To the head sail. Yeah. So, so once you are hoisting the sail, it's automatically going into the, the hook. Okay. Uh, and once you want to, to drop the sail with the wind, it's automatically coming off. Wow, that's super so. easy as well. So a lot of innovation here, you know, I have to say. You've, you've clearly spent a lot of time thinking about this <laughs> and probably a lot of money. And uh, to the benefit of all of us sailors, even more interesting, you've got another piece of kit here which looks super interesting. This is a, this a is a reef hook. lock. Yes. Yeah. So you can you can lock the reef in. Um, I, I'm putting you under pressure here because we haven't actually practiced it before. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, you have some sort of um, system yeah. where you can actually lock in the reef. And I've often thought myself that that would be super super nice to have some sort of system um, instead of you relying on a jammer, which yeah, can, exactly. Can, can this blow. is really interesting because yeah. you can use a smaller diameter reef line. Uh, it creates also a fixed point on the on the leech. Yeah. Uh, you just um, operate it with uh, two lines: once to uh, to install it and once to to release. So um, basically, 
just pull. It's true that we have not been prepared before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's so, it. It's that and easy. And then you just hoist the, the high yarn. Oh, wow. And the reef is installed. Yeah, that, that, that looks super easy. That does look super easy, I have to say, as long, you know, as long as this piece, as long as you're prepared and you understand how it works. But yeah, that, that strikes me as, as, as a much more reliable, chafe-free solution. Yeah, I like that. Especially for, for long cruising, it's, it's a really interesting solution. Yeah. yeah. Um, and once you want to release your reef, you just uh, drop a little bit the main halyard and then operate with a trip line, which is normally basically connected to directly it. to the roof. Yeah. And so that you can Job release done. it easily. Yeah. So that's, that's relaxing. It's, you know, knowing that it has to be, it has to be re re relaxed first. The tension must be gone before the hook is released. That's, that's exactly what you want. Ideal. Thanks. Can I get a hundred percent discount? <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the larger, this is a real, very large uh, lock system from Carver for the, the reef lock. And it strikes me as a super attractive system. So if it's if the sail is if it's relaxed, what can, you can do is you can from the cockpit, you can re relax the hook, and now you can hoist your main. Uh, that seems to me that seems to me like like an, uh, a a so quite a simple solution for a problem that every sailor has, particularly in cruising. You know, you're, when you're tired and you're offshore, there's still wind in the mainsail. Getting it dropped completely and being accurate about where you put put the reef in is always a little bit of a problem. And also sometimes you just get stretched and as your lines get older, the, the reefing point, you know, you can mark the reefing point on your lines, but I'd certainly, if I have a more powerful boat, I'd certainly prefer to be relying on that. This is something I've, I've mentioned to you in, in my live streams that I thought was particularly interesting. Uh, before we even start, I have to say this is quite a, quite a nice winch handle anyway, and this is Carver's, it's super light. Uh, and, and it's nice being able to, you know, access the, the, the release button from either side. But anyway, there, there are two winches here that on display that, we, that, they ha that Carver have. There's a speed and, and a power. And I think for most of my viewers that, you know, everybody will have, have heard of Carver probably. I'm hoping they would have done. But this is actually a, a four-speed power winch. And it's rated to 110. And then you have a speed series winch. And, and where this really applies and is super interesting is for somebody that maybe has a, uh, a smaller cockpit space, they don't want the hassle of installing and the, and the price of an electric winch. But say you're starting to, or you, you have uh, young kids, you, you're you know, far offshore and super tired, or maybe you're just a bit older. Um, this in a smaller footprint basically gives you extraordinary, it's a 110, this one is 110? Yes, this one is the size of a 40, James but it developed 110 power. Wow. So it's just incredible yeah. how strong it is. And it's four speed. And, and show, me, show me how it works. Yeah, Rather, yeah. You so here you, you, you can see the hour on the top of the winch. So I'm starting on the first speed with, I can just use it with one hand. And then I will just reverse to go the, to the second speed and continuing to pull. Now you've heard that we, the clutch has been activated. Yeah, activated, exactly. And now I'm starting to struggle. So the only one solution I've got is just to take my second hand and normally, just to, well, normally. while with this power winch, I can just reverse to go to the third speed. And this is what is really interesting once you want to hoist your halyard or just exactly. to pull the Genoa sheet, the last meters. So it's very easy, as you can see. While yeah. if I'm coming back to the second, I'm really struggling. Yeah. As you can see. Yeah, oh, wow. That's, that's super attractive. So it's basically, it's a, a, and, and, and you have a pattern for this, Carver have a pattern for this. It's unique yeah, to Carver. Yes, ex exactly, yeah. So you're getting, you're getting on a very, a smaller footprint. Um, and and can, do you have a price? What kind of price would that be? At the moment, um, this it, one? It, it's true that we are much more expensive compared to a 40, but you have to compare to an electric winch, for example. Right. And this one is much more easier to install. You don't need any power. Exactly. Um, right. But basically we are, almost double the price compared to a, a manual one, uh, depending yeah, where yeah, you get yeah. it. That's interesting, but I'm sure you can, you know, and you have, you have agents and suppliers all across the world. Or yes, we have a com complete, complete network, uh, worldwide so network. That's yeah. really interesting. 
Well, thanks for showing us that one. Let's have a look at the speed one too. Yes, the speed one is uh, very special because this winch is uh, six times faster on the first speed. So here you've got the arrow. And as you can see, normally with a standard winch, uh, you can just pull 20 centimeters per ton on the first speed. Right. But with this one, you can get seven. Wow. Just unbelievable how fast it is. And on the second speed, and it's you, you also start the three times faster. So okay. okay. And this is also a four speed winch. Okay, so it's four speed. So classically, what we do as sailors is, you know, we, we put it on the winch, take out the take out the the tension, you know, put tension into it basically, take out the the loose parts of the rope, and so that's what it's helping with essentially is the start of the procedure. Exactly, it's very useful for single-handed or double-handed crew. Uh, you can just pull put the the rope directly on the winch before getting any tension on it and starting to. To pull. So where I could see that really working is, say, you know, your partner is on, on the other side getting ready for the manoeuvre. It's already set up. You're not, you're not fumbling and trying to get it on the winch and then it's all ready to go. Exactly. So you do the manoeuvre and boom, you start, you start working straight away. Seems, seems super attractive to me, especially for a shorthanded setup. And would most of your customers in this, would they be um, racing or just everything? Or yeah, it's, it's true that it's much more useful for racers, uh, especially to jibe or, sure, or to sure. hoist very fast or halyard. Um, very, very useful winch. You've got to remember as well, we're also, um, you know, where most of this innovation comes from, we're in a region that's like my own country. It's super cold. So when your hands are cold um, and your ability to, to manipulate things is reduced, it's quite nice having the, you know, taking the time to prepare before you do a maneuver when your hands are all cold. So I could see that one being super attractive in that scenario, you know, really, really well done. Just before we finish up here in, in what could be seen as one of the sailor's paradise places here, this is really, you know, gets the mental juices flowing. I think it's quite nice as well that Obviously, but we're, you're at the forefront of technology in a place like this. But they've also thought about people that like the classic boats. So you can hide a, a modern type furler, uh, you know, new technology with, with old style boats. So if you're sailing classic boats, it's quite nice to be able to, to you know, mit, mit, um, match some of the, uh, the look, I think, the style of wood veneer with, with, a, with a wooden classic boat. Haven't seen anything like this before. This is it in action. And this one is a glow in the dark, uh, luminous uh, uh, handle. It basically gives you, you've got to remember again, like I say, we're, we're, we're in a place where it gets very cold and your hands can, you know, wearing gloves is not necessarily always possible. But anyway, this gives you a better, better grip on some lines. So you can see it's a cam cleat inside a handle basically. And you can, you can see how once you put the line in, I would be able to pull on that line um, with more force and without slipping. Whereas, you know, traditionally, if you just, you know, had a stop knot or, you know, a, a boggle like this, uh, it, it's probably not going to be as, as reliable. And these will definitely come off at sea um, and pointless plastic anyway. So, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's quite a nice piece of innovation there as well. Gives you a little bit more strength. And I think that would be more, it's more, you could see that more applying to the, you know, the smaller boats, I think, not, you know, not the 50 footers, but I think, yeah, interesting stuff all the same. This is the Speed 52, and you can kind of get an idea of the, the, the layout. I have to say, I think if I was going to redo things and carry on, uh, I, I, the, the, the middle winch that we have for the main sheets, I'd maybe look at the power version of this. So we have, we have 50, 52s on, on uh, carry on, but it would be quite interesting to look at the power one because I, I don't have uh, electric in, in the, on the main sheets, let's remember, because obviously, uh, remember I said that you need the, feed, the feedback and the feel. Uh, it's not really necessary as well. Uh, but if you, you know, when you get tired, it's quite nice for when you're driving or you're maneuvering. It would have been quite nice to have a, a power one. So definitely if somebody spec up a new boat, I definitely think you should at least come down and, and test out some of this equipment for yourself. And like all my videos, I think, you know, come and see for yourself. I think the, the team here would, you know, welcome you in and to explore some of their equipment and make up your decision about what you want just by touching and feeling and using them yourself.